What you're about to see is an interview with Jonathan Colbert, the head of marketing for Volterra. And just prior to us arriving at the ACT Expo, they issued this press release where they're indicating additional locations where they're building electrification depots. And we'll get into the specifics of the service offerings that they provide. But just very briefly, just to put into context, additional locations in Houston, Phoenix, and Miami are coming soon, and specifically calling out light duty fleets, which as you'll see in the interview, seems to be a growing focus of theirs. This is what the press release link looks like for the location in San Francisco. Right now it's an empty parking deck, but this is what they'll be building into. And I love when you build into a enclosed facility for EV charging, because unlike gas cars, EVs can charge inside just fine. I hope you enjoyed the video. So I'm here with Jonathan Colbert of Volterra yep. at the ACT Expo. Congratulations. This is your first year at the ATC Expo? No, this is our third. Yeah. Wow, yeah, okay. Yeah. For some reason, when I was reading over the material, I thought you guys were a relatively new company, but you're saying you've been around longer than that? 2022 is when we had the official launch. Yep, so 23, 24, 25, yep. yep. Oh, okay. Yep. And um, I was reading over the literature, and there's quite a few stations, and how many of them are open? I know there's not too many, maybe just a handful, is that correct? Yeah, so we, our original site was in Linwood, California. Um, we had a bit of a test site that we were doing with a customer at that point, but since then, we've since last Act Expo, we've launched five more sites that we brought online. Um, so that amounts to another 28 megawatts of power we've brought online at those sites and 294 DC fast chargers. Wow, that's a pretty big upspin. So let's talk about what these sites are. We're talking about charging electric vehicles, light duty, medium duty, and heavy duty. So it's agnostic to the form factor, is that correct? It depends on the fleet. So our business model is we go in, we find sites on behalf of fleets or charging networks. We uh, acquire the site, work through permitting, work through the utility interconnect, bring that site live. And for fleets, we actually run the site for them. We manage all the operations for them. So that ends up being, what is the use case of the fleet? Our first site is a drage fleet so it's at the port of Long Beach um, in Linwood California um, and that is 65 DC fast chargers for 65 um, tractors all right um, the other sites that I mentioned are light duty fleet sites um, so those five sites are basically electric passenger cars that are being used by those fleets I'm assuming a municipalities is that correct these are ride hail fleets right hail fleets. ah okay yeah, and our, our business model is really serving our customers. So while we're talking about the sites, we don't want to get in front of them and their customers and or take get in, in front of them and their business model as well. Um, so we're pretty buttoned up about the customers until we like, we'll make big announcements with them. But um, th these are ride hail fleets. Yeah, so one thing I've noticed, um, I watch DC Fast Charger implementations pretty closely, and a lot of the car dealerships have been forced upon to put electric vehicle charging on their properties and because their main focus is selling cars moving metal they don't really know anything about the whole concept of installing an electric vehicle charging station so someone such as yourselves in order to come in for someone who is needing for either a fleet operation or another form of charging to take care of all the permitting and the engineering and the procurement of the equipment and all those things is definitely needed in this environment. So uh, have you seen the adoption of uh, station requests mostly coming from people who are doing uh, light duty fleets or more medium duty, heavy duty fleet? Like, I'm assuming it's like a uh, captive fleet behind a fence sort of concept. Is that where mostly so you play? We're seeing a lot of traction in light duty fleets, ride hail fleets. Um, so everything from autonomous vehicle fleets to non-autonomous uh, ride hail fleets, as well as um, last mile delivery behind the fence, uh, a lot of traction there. And then on the heavy duty side, Drage is just is this perfect use case for electrification because they're really short routes of taking a container from the port into a terminal and back. Um, so we're seeing some traction there, but much more on the light duty side. I think part of it is the vehicles have been here for a long time. Um, the total cost of, of ownership is much more straightforward, you know, both on the vehicle side and, and, and in, in your fleet operations. Um, so yeah, we're seeing we're seeing traction there. One anecdote, I, I previously worked at um, a, a couple of auto manufacturers and had to do dealer programs, as, as you mentioned before, and um, we actually pushed back and said, we're not going to mandate DC fast charging at that time because of all of the issues that came with it, you know, and 
we, we did a level two program, but um, the, the research and like, let's say all of the things that we learned about each of the dealer points was the upgrades involved with it were so cumbersome, not only from just like a cost standpoint, but like who at that dealership now has to become an expert in working with the utility and the local authority having jurisdiction. So it made us back off of that for sure. And operations and on an ongoing basis, there's really no one at the dealerships who are accustomed to this new piece of electronic that they need to keep in operation in order to stay in compliance. So it's all uh, having someone who is uh, providing the uptime service and the repair uh, definitely as a business model for sure is going to have a very bright future. And I would imagine that uh, you're forecasting a growth period for the next 10 years. Does that sound correct? Yeah, definitely. Like there's part of it is and, you know, um, you know, it kind of comes in waves throughout the industry of like new technology, new vehicle releases. But part of it is the, these auto manufacturers, which we're, we have the privilege of being around and seeing these really cool booths here at Act Expo. They, they've been planning these vehicles and they plan these vehicles in a seven to 10 year planning cycle. And then another seven to 10 years of being on the road. We're in that, um, we're in this wave of electrification and we're just at the beginning of it. And we've got years and years and years and years of more vehicles to come. And um, we're seeing adoption, not only from the fleet perspective, perspective, but also on the passenger car side, folks like you and I are starting to adopt electric vehicles more and more. So on the charging network side, we're seeing a ton of growth and we project a lot of growth. And on the fleet side, um, light duty, it's already starting to, total cost of ownership is already starting to pencil. So we're seeing traction there. Medium to heavy duty, they're starting to learn more and more vehicles are becoming available. Yeah, I would have to imagine if I'm a fleet operator, the prospect of not having to worry about fuel depoting either bladders of uh, diesel fuel yeah. or uh, uh, just regular gasoline on my property or having to do uh, pay cards to my drivers in order to stop off and just have them bring them back to the depot, exactly. get them refilled on electrons, on off cycles, and then put them back out on the road really is attractive. I'm going to have a hard time saying no to that. There's a compelling story here that I think a lot of times we're so focused, and us included, we're so focused on the individual depot getting it off the ground for this fleet and their operations. But to your point, at scale, there's this ability to say, I've negotiated either with my utility, what the rate is going to be, right? Or I've negotiated with public charging networks when I have to go and charge publicly to see what the rate is going to be and not be at the mercy of what what is the diesel price when my driver pulls up to it, right? And there's there's something not only like compelling, but like almost like we're in this this new renaissance of energy, right? Where it's like we can kind of take more of the business in the, the business owner's hands and, and control that, you know? And I've, I'm excited for it. Yeah, new future for fleet operations. Yeah. So Jonathan, much appreciated. Yeah, of course, thanks. Thank you.